have students come up to me all the time after taking a semester in philosophy. There ought to be a rule. You should not be able to talk about philosophy unless you've had more than a semester of philosophy. (laughs) If you haven't had any, that's fine. Talk away. But if you've had a semester, you are messed up. (laughs) Be better off just not taking it at all. And they'll come up and they'll say things to me and they fought these things out. And I'm on the campus to talk about these issues and dealing with apologetics and they want to catch me alone and ask me these questions and they look at me and they say, I just wanted to ask you that um, if you believe in a God that is omnipotent and omnibenevolent, then how do you reconcile the issue of theodicy? To which I respond, took a semester of philosophy, right? Oh yes, how did you know? Because if you hadn't, you'd have just said, listen, God's so powerful and so good, how come bad stuff happens? (laughs) But I'm not going to answer the question until you ask it correctly. (laughs) I worked on that all week. What do you mean ask it correctly? You're not asking the question properly. What do you mean ask the question properly? It's my question. You can't tell me how to ask my question. I will answer your question when you ask it properly. How do I ask it properly? Here's how you ask that question properly. You look me in my eyes and you ask me this. How on earth can a holy and righteous God know what I did and thought and said on yesterday and not kill me in my sleep last night. You ask it that way and we can talk. But until you ask the question that way, you don't understand the issue. Until you ask the question that way, you believe the problem is out there. Until you ask the question that way, you believe that there are somehow some individuals who in and of themselves deserve something other than the wrath of Almighty God. Until you ask me the question that way, until you flip the script and ask the question this way and say, why is it that we are here today? Why has he not consumed and devoured each and every one of us? Why, why, oh God, does your judgment and your wrath tarry? When you ask it that way, you understand the issue. When you ask it the other way, you believe in the supremacy of man. How dare God not employ his power on behalf of almighty man. You flip the question around, you believe in the supremacy of Christ. How dare I steal his heir? Because the last breath I took, I borrowed it from him. And I'm never going to give it back. When you borrow something and never give it back, you're stealing. I mean, you need to take a moment and get right right now. (laughs) The problem is me. The problem is the fact that I do not acknowledge the supremacy of Christ in truth. The problem is, I start with me as the measure of all things. The problem is, I judge God based upon how well he carries out my agenda for the world. And I believe in the supremacy of me in truth. And as a result, I want a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign. If I have a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign, I can wield his power. But if my God is both omnipotent 
and sovereign. I am at his mercy.